Which of the following is the product of the intramolecular deals of the reaction shown below? Well, as you can see here, this molecule looks pretty complicated, but we can notice that there is a diene and dienophile inside of it. What is a diene and dienophile? These are the two reactants of deals of the reaction. We must have a diene, which is double single double bond, and we must have a dienophile, which is a double bond or a triple bond. They react together in such a way as to form cyclohexene. And let's go ahead and show our arrows. So the arrows can go this way, either clockwise or counterclockwise, it does not matter. And we can also number one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so we can see that um, when we have a diene and dienophile with the hit, we we conduct this alder reaction and this is the product that we get we get the cyclohexene and the way I numbered you can number any way you'd like but this is the way I number and you can follow my numbering as well so this is the simplest case of Diels alder now if you look at this reaction at this reactant we can see that we have the diene let's go ahead and highlight it so my diene is here and we also have the dienophile here. So we have double single double bond and we have a double bond. So we can see that an intramolecular reaction here can happen. However, currently these are not really aligned in such a way, uh, in such a way that it will be easy for us to predict the product. Moreover, the diene here is not in as cis conformation this is called as cis where the two double bonds are on the same side of the single bond here the two double bonds are not on the same side of the single bond so what we will need to do is we will need to rotate our molecule around to try to uh, align it with our prototype so what i have done here is I started from this end, I have double single double bond and I put it in acid conformation. Then I noticed that this double bond is uh, trans. So, um, so I put my uh, substituent here to make it trans, the two, uh, the two bonds like this. And then I just continued with my molecule and I try to align it and to make it look as best as I can in terms of my prototype here so that I can follow through with what I have shown here. So now that we have double single double bond, we have our diene and we have our dienophile and they're aligned against one another. We can go ahead and we can number them. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the product of our deal solder is always a cyclohexene. So there are two ways to do it. And I will go ahead and I will show you both ways. One way is to just draw the product because I know the product is a cyclohexene. And to number it at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then to see what carbons am I missing. So I can see that 6 and 1, so this and this carbon, they're connected to a bunch of carbons that we have not shown yet. So six is connected to one carbon, this one, then another carbon, this one, then another carbon, this one, and that carbon has a double bond O, and then that carbon is connected to carbon number one. So I can see that this is my product. And if I look at the, um, possible answer choices, I can see that we can eliminate D because this one has a cyclohexene with a double bond O and that's not what I have. C has double bond inside cyclopentane, not cyclohexane, so we can eliminate C, D. And between A and B, we can see that my double bond is inside a cyclohexene and here it is not. So even if you didn't know how to do this reaction properly, you could have known that Diels-Alder does give me a cyclohexene, 
So you could eliminate probably C and A because uh, you don't even see cyclohexane in there. Um, actually, A does have a cyclohexane, never mind, but you could have eliminated C. So, so our product looks like it's going to be B because we have a cyclohexane ring, a cyclohexane ring. The double bond is one carbon away from where the cyclopentane starts. And we also have a cyclopentane with a double bond O. So in terms of the double bond placement, it's not placed here in my product, so it cannot be A. It's placed uh, one carbon away, so it must be B. Now, another thing that you could do is you could just draw the arrows and follow the arrows, and I will show you how to do that also. So let's go ahead and let's redraw our molecule. But aligning the molecule will be very useful. So my arrows will go like this, like this, and like this, and we can just follow them. So the first arrow, it gets rid of the first double bond, this double bond, and it connects the two carbons like that. Now this arrow gets rid of this double bond, so I'm going to get rid of it, and it, and it makes a double bond here. And this arrow gets rid of this double bond, so I'm going to get rid of it, and it connects the two carbons as well. So that's an ugly molecule, but it's still correct, and that's another way to draw my product. So one way is to just uh, know that you create a cyclohexene, to draw the cyclohexene, to number it, and to see what is left in terms of the uh, carbons that we have not used for the cyclohexene. Another way is just to draw the arrows and to follow the arrows to connect the carbons that the arrows connect and to break the bonds and to make the bonds according to the arrows. And that's another way to draw the product. And so my product here will be B, like we said before. Uh, this problem is a little bit more complicated because it's intramolecular. Intramolecular means within the same molecule. And basically, I think of it as a dog attacking its tail. So we can see that one part of the molecule, the back of the molecule is reacting with the front of the molecule to create a new molecule. And it will be creating a citrus B. This is Maya from Transformation Tutoring. I really hope that you found this video helpful. And I really look forward to seeing you in more of my organic chemistry and general chemistry videos.